Hey, this is Steven from The Green Engineers, and welcome back to a new chore chat. Uh, today is the uh, Sunday, May 20th, the last day of Maker Fair San Mateo, um, Bay Area Maker Fair, I guess you'd say. Um, we're heading to the location again, so uh, the tour today is going to be driving again to the fair, and um, uh, we're going to finish up our last day and then do cleanup, and that's it. And then back to work. So yesterday, uh, we're going to get a chance to upload it, or well, upload it. Um, I basically did a video, uh, I did a uh, another audio vlog like this for a chore chat of me driving to... Um, the event yesterday, and uh, that one we talked about uh, Maker Fair, uh, Maker Fair uh, Tech Shop, or uh, the old, you know Tech Shop's the old name. The new name is the Shop Dot Build. So we talked a little bit about that and uh, uh, what's going to be going on there. Um, got some new information. Supposedly, it's going to be opening um, June one, which is like pretty crazy. That's 12 days from now, less than two weeks. Um, Supposedly, they're waiting for a signature and they're waiting for it to get signed. And what happened is they sent the... uh, uh, Yesterday, they were waiting for it. and uh, Friday, they were waiting for it. And then today, they sent sent it back saying that it needed some amendments before it was going to be signed. So they're going to make the amendments, send it back, and try to get it approved so they can get their lease and be able to uh, uh, start uh, putting all the machines in there. They're probably not going to do much building. That's probably why it's going to be so quick. They're just going to put all their machines in there. Uh, sorry about the paint cans in the back. Every time I stop, the paint the paint roller ball, balls are going to go to the front if you hear that. Um, it'll be a lot better when I get on the freeway and I'm constantly going forward. And I don't have to stop for anything. So, uh, today on this... Um, I'm going to try to keep my uh, my voice low because uh, I'm starting to lose my voice from the first two days so far. And the days are pretty long. It goes from uh, 10 to 7. So, we're talking nine-hour days of we're talking to people. So, um, I'm also pretty tired again this morning. Didn't really get much sleep just like yesterday. All right, so today's subject, uh, we're going to be talking about the Green Engineers near future, which is the uh, which is the summer. So my last final for San Jose State for this semester is um, coming up and on Tuesday the twenty second. So twenty second, I have my last final at ME one thirty, and then we're officially in summer. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what that's. What's that? What that is going to look like uh, for me, and what else? What other things are going to have to compete for my time? Uh, in addition to the green engineering, pro- the green engineers project. Uh, so, I'm not going to be finished with school yet. The, I have another year next year, so I'm not graduated. So, uh, one of my plans is that I might take a. Uh, a summer class, um, ME40, which or I think it's actually Math 40, is um, discrete algebra for my computer science minor. I might do that, or I might just save the summer strictly for working on projects and push that to my last year, to my last semester, where I have a slot open to take it. Because um, my last semester I'll only be taking three classes, so there I could add a fourth. Right now I'm taking, like, actually no, I'd be taking, yeah, three, three classes, four classes, five, so I'd be taking five classes, that might be a little much. Anyways, um, yeah, so this summer we have uh, three months from May 22nd to like August 22nd, um, or August 20th or something like that, it's a Wednesday. Um, I'll have to uh, look that up to get to make that official and put it on my calendar and stuff. But uh, we have a decent amount of time. So that's three months. Uh, three months to work on uh, projects, 
or maybe have a lot of it taken up by summer school, we'll have to see. Um, I'm going to try to take that class online if I can so I don't have to physically go. So I can kind of do so I can kind of do it when I'm working on when I'm at the the te- when I'm at the shop when it reopens. So, um, basically, what's on the slate here for uh, tech for uh, for this coming this coming summer is we have the 3D printer project called the Eco Base, and that is just a kind of a kind of just a project name, kind of a rough name. I don't have anything, uh, I haven't come up with a really cool name for it yet. Then we have, uh, the, finish up the Kickstarter on the, uh, the, uh, multi-shooter. So I have the modules built out, so I'm ready just to write the code and then build them and send them out. Uh, send them international. So I have those two. Then I have, so in total I'm going to have four. So the EcoBase, the Bamboo 3D Printer. Which uh, I have a, um, I have another chore chat where I'm doing some cleanup in, uh, around the house, and uh, I'll have to find that and release that uh, where I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about that specific project and what that what that is. Um, then I have the multi shooter, uh, which is a filament maker. Then I have the. Um, then I have the shredder, so the reclaimer, which is a uh, which is a six inch by six inch by three and a half inch plastic shredder that uses uh, that has metal dials that will shred plastic. Uh, and then the final project is actually just a development project. Uh, is the um, second version of the multi shooter called the Phila Factory, and the Phila Factory is going to be. Uh, primarily machined uh, most of the stuff that's important will be machined so the um, the extruder housing will be machined and the electronics will be swapped out and there's going to be a few things that are that are changed drastically on it <coughs> so that one I'm going to get a running prototype and then I'm going to do the final kind of industrial design on it and make it look really nice and then uh, get ready for uh, production, probably uh, probably during the winter, uh, winter uh, break, which is uh, so it'd be August, it'd be four months from then. So it's like it's like March or something. So in March or something like that, um, that's when that uh, project will be running through Kickstarter and I'll be sending out to uh, different reviewers to review and then uh, start production on it um, during and after the uh, Kickstarter campaign. So that's kind of what I have on my plate here. Uh, A few different things. Most projects are are, uh, like 5% left to go into uh, that are almost assembled uh, running prototypes um, well not really prototypes they're uh, production prototypes so it's basically a um, QC control for uh, prototypes um, for the final version right so those are pretty much done for the most part shredder just needs uh, four more pieces that um, San Jose State's going to cut out for me on the water jet and the uh, uh, then I need to weld it together, but I have a welder at home and at school at the shop And tech shops gonna have it as well um, Yeah, so that's uh That's what that one looks like and then the uh, the the furthest one that has a lot to go is the uh, printer is the eco based 3d printer and that one I'm gonna need uh, different machines uh, same thing as the shredder to shredder. It's going to require the fiber laser at uh, uh, the shop dot builds to San Jose location. When that opens up, they're going to have a fiber laser there that will be able to cut the material that I need to cut. So it really requires that machine. It won't really be able to run very well without that machine. So it will require that. 
Next is uh, the so the multi shooter. That's just that's just mainly time uh, time spent to put it back to build all of them. There's not really much machining or any, any anything else that needs to go into that. There is quite a bit of development time though, because I I don't have the software all packed together to work with the dimensional control and the spooler module. So that will require quite a bit of work. Um, and then, like I said, the uh, the then we have the. Uh, Fill a factory, and that's going to require quite a bit of R&D. It's pretty much all entirely R&D, and I don't want to get ready to produce it on a Kickstarter until it's uh, streamlined enough to where I could produce it very, very quickly. So if I can't produce it very, very quickly, then it's not. It's pretty hard to get into because I like to do the work just by myself, so I can keep the uh, keep the price down because of the minimum wage. And uh, my state, California, is pretty high. So that is uh, basically all the projects that I have. And uh, the plan is, the big plan for uh, this summer is I want to go into uh, a Kickstarter with um, the, the uh, printer, the 3D printer, the Eco, the Ecobase 3D printer. Uh, the bamboo 3D printer. I want to go into a Kickstarter with that in two months. So May, June, July, uh, July 22nd, somewhere around there. And then run it for one month to be done right before I go into school. And then when I go, uh, the plans up to there are spend the next um, until tech shop opens. So maybe. 10 days, 10, 15 days to uh, finish the model, finalize everything, because I have, I have all the parts that I initially need to uh, build it. So uh, I just need to uh, put together the parts. I, I have the, all the parts in a box. So I just need to be uh, get access to the machines to cut it, to route it, and laser it. And then put all the parts together upload the firmware and then uh, I'm ready to rock and roll so that's what's uh, coming on the slate for, uh, for that guy then uh, before before or during I'll see how quickly I can build it but I would like to send out um, I would like to send out uh, prototypes I guess you could say to uh, all the uh, some YouTuber, not all the YouTubers, but some of the some of the review YouTubers to to get their hands on it and be able to uh, be able to review it and show their viewers and kind of get it in front of viewers. So uh, one person I talked to at the event here is a uh, friend of my cousin uh, Thomas. Thomas, uh, he's a YouTuber from Germany. Uh, I forgot his uh, last name. It starts with an S. Anyways, uh, talked to him a little bit about it. Got some. Uh, uh, talked to him about all three projects, not including. Uh, I did also talk to him about the next version of Multi Shooter. Uh, talked to him a little bit about that. He gave me some tips, tips about uh, some of the stuff. So I'll talk to him if he's here today. I'll talk to him uh, again today about sending me a unit when I finish it. If not, uh, I'll have to ask my cousin for. Yeah, or, or add him on Google Hangouts and send him a t uh, send him a message, or send him an email and see what he thinks about it and see if he'll have time. Another one that I would like to do is uh, Maker Muse. I've been following him for a, for a while, I'm willing to ship it out to Arizona because people watch people watch that video, from, people watch his uh, content from all over the world, not just Australia. So uh, also those two guys are great on international. Another one that's also at the show I have not talked to, I don't think I've ever talked to, is uh, Joel, uh, Joel, so I keep saying Joel, it's Joel, uh, Joel the 3D printing nerd, so he's doing some work out here uh, with uh, Matter Hackers, so um, he's over there at their booth, uh, I, I do want to uh, talk to him a little bit uh, today, because he had, he had a filament maker 
that uh, he had uh, done a video on a few days back, and it did not have dimensional control, and it just it just didn't work. So I know that I know that that's a thing because I built one and without a dimensional control. It's really difficult for it to work. So I know that for sure. But I, I want to get some uh, almost like market research because a lot of these YouTuber guys they they kind of. Um, each of their personality represents a big portion of the market. But, you know, what they say is not, you know, it is gold, but it's not, you know, uh, written in stone where each each YouTuber has a different thing on uh, messing with stuff. For example, uh, Joel, the 3D printing nerd, he's, he's kind of the guy that likes to just get stuff and it work, right? He doesn't want to tinker with nothing. Well, not nothing. He just he just doesn't want to tinker with something because he knows that most people that get the products don't want to tinker with something. I don't, I, I don't know if that's his personal thing or, you know, just that he doesn't have time to do it. That is, you know, a choice or he's just not into it. I'm not completely sure. I'm not too, uh, not too deep into his content. But that's just something I noticed on, the, on a few of his videos. Then you have Thomas. Thomas is huge at the tinkering. That's pretty much mostly what he does. He doesn't really get a project. He doesn't really get a printer and then not push it to its limits and crack it open and look inside and stuff. So he's, he's a tinkerer. He's the definition of a tinkerer. So completely two different sides of the market. And he kind of, mep- he kind of represents the tinkerer side of the market. Joel represents the uh, just the main... Uh, or hobbyist, I guess you could say, where um, they 3D print for fun, but they don't want to learn how circuits work or uh, electricity works or thermodynamics or anything like that or structural dynamics of your parts or they probably don't even want to build physical parts. They just want to build um, old statues or whatever. Uh, yeah, so Maker Muse, he's, uh, he's kind of in the middle He's a, he's, he'll get a project and he'll definitely tinker it with it, but he won't, he won't really go into, uh, he'll definitely push it to the limit too. He makes a lot of, uh, stress test, uh, prints and, um, tests the printers to the absolute limits of how, what kind of overhangs and speeds it can do. But, uh, yeah, he's kind of in the middle of a tinker and stuff. He doesn't really post videos of like, here's how electricity works. Here's how this, here, this is why this extruder is not going to work. He's just kind of, you know, a very analytical. He's still a pretty analytical guy. He'll look at something and says, that's clearly not going to work. What are you doing? He can look at pictures of printers. I saw one where he talked about 10 ridiculous printers. He would look at them and instantly see a problem and say, hey, this is clearly not going to work. And then I agree with it and stuff. So he's, he's good. He's great for insight, especially if, you know, I talked to him before I went into, uh, production with it, but I'm definitely excited to send him some stuff. I've, I've been following him the longest, I guess you could say. I haven't watched uh, some of um, I just recently got back into his content, but uh, yeah, I never met him in person uh, either. Joel, I've seen him two years in a row, maybe even three years in a row at Maker Faire. Never talked to him, so I want to try to talk to him uh, today and see if he has some time in between... Uh, uh, promoting for Matter Hackers or uh, whatnot. Uh, also, uh, somebody I was talking to yesterday on the way back to the car was uh, some of the guys from uh, PrinterBot, and I think they're uh, they're higher up in the company. I can't remember I can't remember their names at this point. I tried to remember, but I couldn't I couldn't remember through the night. So uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, I'll, I'll have to ask them again. I'm terrible with names. It's really bad quality for somebody in business to not remember somebody else's name, but I'm really terrible with names. So I have to remember all the stuff. Well, it's, I don't want to go into excuses for it, but um, remembering all the stuff from school and all the stuff that's going on on the project and then remember somebody's name for two days and then not see them for another year, right? But, you know, I've seen the, the names of Joel and Thomas and... Uh, Maker Muse. I can't even remember his name for Maker Muse, actually. Anyways. So, yeah. Uh, I think one of them started 
or as a manager for PrinterBot. I'm not sure, but they are going back into selling their printer belt, and uh, they have the the new simple metal with the touchscreen and all that stuff. So those would also be good guys to talk to, especially to uh, get the filament maker too to review, and then also we got you know other opportunities are uh, Make Magazine. Uh, Make would be a good person to have uh, review the printer, even though I mean, it's got to look pretty weird. Those guys would be good guys, and then uh, uh, the uh, shredder. I don't know about the shredder, but uh, the filament maker would also be a. Uh, uh, they would also be good guys to uh, to review it and give it a uh, number of points out of ten or whatever. But yeah, so that's the idea is to get uh, get the publicity out. Obviously, I'm going to be checking to make sure it's good publicity, make sure the printer works and everything. Um, get that out there, and then. Uh, take any feedback that they have, take it to heart, change the printer, so, uh, so kind of uh, fix those problems, and then, uh, yeah, then move forward with uh, starting production, and uh, start producing them during the semester. I might even try to do the Kickstarter early, to where I have a month where of summer where I could uh, start producing those units uh, before the start of the school semester again, and uh, see if I can pump the pump some units through the the uh, to the stack there, and then uh, see if I can get those out before school starts, so I could uh, uh, take a, take some load off of uh, what's going on during school. But most of it's CNC stuff, uh, so I could, and hopefully, there's, there's obviously the shop, I'm assuming the shop's gonna be back up by the time I need to start producing. Um, just go to the shop and start, uh, get on a machine and then uh, do, uh, do some homework while the machine's running. Anything else? So that's pretty much most of what I got going on in the summer is just those four projects. Obviously, I do not want to leave the summer without having all of the uh, multi-shooter done and gone, and then that Kickstarter ended. So I could uh, start working on the second version, and uh, then roll into the printer uh, printer project, and also uh, the the shop dot build guys, like I said in my video yesterday, are here at the show, and they brought a pretty sweet machine. That I really like. Um, it's a metalworking machine, and it's able to uh, um, shear uh, very, very big plates of steel, very, very thick plates of steel, and also it's got a punch and a notcher, punch notcher and a break to fold steel, fold thick steel into angles. Now. Um, that's really good for me because I have a whole bucket full of stuff from the last tech shop with the, the square uh, where I was cutting squares with the uh, CNC plasma and they weren't coming out correct so what I could do is get a square brooch for that guy and uh, punch uh, and chase the holes and just punch it out and hopefully it doesn't hopefully it doesn't buckle on the backside because originally I was planning on doing broaching by hand, but even by hand, the broach might not be, uh, uh, might require too much pressure to get it to go through, even just to chase the hole. So uh, this one will go right through it. This is not a broach, it's just a square broach, and one step punches a three quarter hole. And it's designed to punch three quarter hole, three quarter by three quarter hole with no hole at all. So it doesn't turn a circular hole into a square hole. It turns a nothing hole into a square hole. So uh, that guy will probably work, but I'm worried about it blowing out the backside of the, uh, of the cut and causing it to warp the steel on the backside. Because a little bit of the lip is hardened uh, on the inside. So hopefully it will go right through 
and then I'll have a perfect three quarter, three quarter hole, and then I'm able to uh, use those parts because I have a bucket full of 200 200 dollars worth of parts. So it'd be nice if uh, I was able to punch it and be able to use all those parts. So I have the shredder dials. I have I have all different types of things that I need to be able to uh, to use. Um, most of it I could fix on the grinder and stuff, but I'll have to punch the uh, the spacers. I have to punch the, the sh and so I have to punch the spacers and the shredder dials. Those I have to punch, and then I'm just gonna have to find a way to file. Um, or grind the uh, the blades to be really nice uh, outside to be really nice and then I could sell those as like um, sort of kind of like refurbished uh, versions I might I might try to sell them and get those to the to the backers uh, not the backers but the, uh, the pre-order guys for the machines itself because it's just gonna look it's just not gonna look that great uh, most likely the machine itself but it'll function it'll function just as well as every other machine so so yeah um, and then I need to get access to the uh, the um, what's it called the kilns I don't think they have any kilns in San Francisco but I do need to get some access to kilns at uh, uh, my school SJSU uh, they have I know for sure that they have quite a few kilns at the school because uh, I've used them and they're all propane fired I think uh, kilns so that would be perfect for heat treating and then in the same room they have uh, they have a tensile tester to, uh, to put in dog bones and do tensile testing of steels plastics and stuff and three-point bend tests and stuff like that and also they have a desktop um, Rockwell C hardness tester, which is uh, pretty sweet. So um, excited to test some stuff on that uh, as well. Uh, quite a few of the part, uh, only a few of the parts need to be hardened. Just the uh, set, just the shredder dials and the um, and the shaft needs to be hardened considerably. Because the shaft will actually fail in torsion before the shredder dials break themselves. So that's uh, that needs to be done, and uh, that's mostly what needs to be done on that project. And the main thing I'm waiting for on that project to continue production after, let's say, I build. I think I have enough parts. In those totes to build the um, to build maybe three uh, maybe six shredders possibly in those totes. I'll ha I have plenty of uh, plenty of material to uh, to build all the ones that I need to build. And uh, then I have one this one here, but this one here I'm not going to sell because it's messed up. The one that uh, uh, San Jose State water jetted. And then when I need to produce more. I uh, will wait till TechShot comes back up and use their use their laser, uh, their fiber laser. And if for whatever reason TechShot does not come back, I will just uh, possibly get ready to just build my own plasma to uh, use that to cut the material, and then maybe find a machine, uh, or maybe go to San Francisco and chase those holes if need be. That's pretty much the status of uh, my plan for the summer. Um, just mostly work. Uh, I, I will probably not be doing much at uh, my part-time job at uh, the uh, machine shop. Probably do one thing. Probably do one thing every two weeks, every three weeks. Work a whole eight-hour shift, and other than that, uh, not really do much. So that is that is the plan for the part-time job. Uh, that's probably going to be coming to the to an end here pretty soon, and uh, just move on to my full-time projects.
the slow late Dia to Summer internship. Um, anyways. And, my, and then maybe, if I really needed to, I could go uh, work back at uh, Owens Corning Fiberglass. But that's uh, full time, not really very flexible. We're just passing uh, Woodside Road. 84 West, Woodside Road, um, which is the street I would take off of to go to Redwood City Tech Shop. So, and that place, and it's that location is still closed. Anyway, so I'm trying to think of what else I could add to this uh, to this tour chat, but that's pretty much it um, um, on what uh, what I need to talk about. I pretty much talked about everything. Um, Main thing I haven't talked about is what's going to be required on that uh, R&D design for uh, the Shredder version two. So with the Shredder version two, it's it's uh, just some basic CAD um, uh, buying buying all the tools, buying a reamer to cut the inside out. So first you drill it, ream it, so you drill a certain size hole, and then ream out the hole so it fits in there. And I do some research on uh, the, a proper uh, lead screw and um, what that needs to look like for the, uh, the different zones. You have the metering zone, the, the uh, melt zone, and the compression zone. So you're going to have to mathematically derive that or look at how they build it and kind of copy it, whether it's mathematically driven or a kind of... Um, assumptions from a, di from a diagram of another one so uh, that will be the uh, that'll be for the screw and then that guy will be a CNC lathe that the new tech shop got built they're supposedly going to be getting a CNC Haas the uh, the piece itself that gets a hole drilled in it and it's going to get reamed is, uh, could be done on a manual mill. That's not a problem. And then that guy has a few holes drilled into it, which I'll either do manually, uh, I'll either do on, on a mill, or I'll do uh, on a CNC mill. Or I'll just load the whole entire thing into uh, into the CNC lathe and then use the, high, uh, use the live tooling to uh, to cut into the material itself, cut the cut the holes that are required. Some of them need to be cut at an angle. So, Let's see how well that goes. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for uh, this video. I'm super tired. I, I guess I really didn't sleep very well last night. So uh, I might just stop it here and try to conserve my energy here for the show. Maybe take a little nap at the show or take a nap in my car because I'm going to be there pretty early. It'll be there um, maybe 8.45 in our nine minutes or so. And the uh, show starts at 10. So I'll have, uh, I'll get there at 9. Have an hour to uh, have an hour to, uh, to network and talk to these guys I was telling you that I was going to talk to you. And then 6.45, uh, 6, the show's over, 6.45, uh, vehicles are able to drive on to the, uh, are able to drive on to the, the, uh, the show floor. So it takes me about 15 minutes to get from the show to my car, so I'll leave at 6.30, uh, talk to some people for 30 minutes and leave at 6.30, uh, and go get my car, drive on to the drive on to the uh, site, pick all my stuff up, go home, take a little nap, and then study for um, my final tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. Monday, study all day. Tuesday, study till 12, and then final starts at 12. And then, uh, then my summer has begun. Time to do R&D. Maybe one summer school class might not even do summer school class, and uh, get it all done and over with. And 
school done and over with. Then uh, move. I'll be doing my senior project, which is the next video, so I don't have enough time to do it. Actually, I'm coming up on Hillsdale right now, so we're we're definitely on time here. Actually, uh, even before time, I might get an extra five, six minutes to talk to people. So yeah, um, to uh, maybe on the way home, depending on how I feel, I'm probably going to be extremely exhausted. Um, maybe one of the days coming up after my final when I'm cleaning my my room or the house or the uh, I got a lot of stuff that I got to sell over the summer so um, or I'm you know getting ready to do that looking and inventorying everything and writing it down uh, I might do that chore chat where I talk about the future but not so uh, um, immediate future which is like four months four months plus which uh, three months plus, which is a senior project, and how uh, the green engineers is going to be involved with senior project, and how I'm going to have a team and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so uh, this has been Stephen from the Green Engineers, and I like to thank you guys for listening to this extremely tired and probably boring um, chore chat of the last day driving out to Mega Fair San Mateo 2018. I believe this is the 19th. So, thank you guys for uh, listening, and uh, I will try to upload yesterday. Uh, I have not yet uploaded yesterday's uh, chore chat. I will do that as soon as I can, and as soon as I can, I'll uh, I'll uh, upload this one. I'm sorry if the uh, audio quality is not that great. This is one of the few times that I'm doing the chore chat while driving because it's a considerable amount of time to to get down to the event itself anyways so I wanted to uh, spend that time um, doing this doing this video here let's see if I can get into the, uh, the parking lot this way anyways uh, thank you guys so much for listening and uh, I hope to get this audio to you as soon as possible I'm off to get into uh, Maker Fair uh, the parking lot here for Maker Fair and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening. Take it easy. Peace.